training some back today. Some bicep board action. Some pullovers. Uh, I think while on a carnivore diet, there's not a lot of reasons to utilize any supplements that I can think of. Um, I think all your nutrient needs will be met. Um, for me personally, I am somebody that's into supplements, vitamins, minerals, so I take a wide variety of stuff that goes beyond the scope of like talking about it right here because I'd have to show it to you but I have showed it to you guys in the past so I take like vitamin D and I take magnesium I take a bunch of stuff none of which was as proven to do much of anything even vitamin D is pretty controversial I have a guy coming on the show tomorrow talking about vitamin D there's people that think that you need to supplement it and there's other people that say that that's hogwash, that you don't need to worry about it, you just need to get out in the sun and just need to, you know, figure out ways of being healthy. But there's other people that think that vitamin D is like a marker of health. Truth is, most of the things we do for ourselves or all things that we do for ourselves will always be more important than things that we do to ourselves so to ourselves would be supplements for ourselves would be exercise and a good nutrition plan and it just a overall healthy living style so I don't think there's any supplements in particular that you would need to uh, be on a successful carnivore diet kind of the beauty of it if you do uh, maybe a vegan style diet or do other types of dieting you might miss out on some nutrients I guess I have heard a couple people say that you might need like glycine or something like that for amino acid but you can get that from bone broth in the carnivore diet Uh, what I do for a pump is the same uh, on any style of diet. I just come in and, and work the muscle, get the reps in. And uh, the pump is a byproduct of the exercise. How to get a pump on a carnivore diet might be something you're wondering, but um, I don't have a problem with that either. It just seems to happen. I, I work out, I work the muscles, and... Uh, we just end up engorging the muscle with a lot of blood via lifting. So you're not going to end up with like less blood in your muscles when you're on a carnivorous diet. So this is how I get a pump on a carnivore diet. I eat meat and I train. My training sessions I always have a drink with me I've talked about it many times I take uh, I got some element which is basically salt or uh, electrolytes I have a product called element that I put into the drink I've been utilizing electrolytes for a long time the electrolytes help um, help keep some fluid 
in the muscles, help get some fluid to the muscles, help you repair and recover a little faster. And uh, that seems to work pretty good. And I also have some essential amino acids during the training session. Just train yourself hard, train yourself rigorously, and most of all, fuck what you heard. Because what you heard is wrong. You can get fucking jacked. You can get super jacked off carnivore diet. So, you know, don't let people try to steer you in a particular direction thinking that you can't look like a bodybuilder or a physique competitor off of eating meat. Anabolic IV, an element. That's what's in here. Super setting some pull downs. Over there, this movement right here, these pullovers. We are, um, I think it's Jan 19. So we've got 12 more days of this carnivoreness. We are at uh, about 12 o'clock, it's almost noon. And I haven't eaten anything yet today. I had a protein shake. I do a protein shake every morning with some coffee in it. I do something called a protein sparing modified fast. So basically this means I eat protein. Only protein. until my first meal, which will be after this. I think if you're, you know, if you're trying to lose weight and you're fat, I think you should work out every day. You know, just, just train every day. Like even get to the gym every day. We can worry about overtraining at some other point, but uh, pick a body part, work one body part every day, rotate it around, whatever feels best, work that. Also, those of you that have been discouraged and haven't trained in a while, just work what you like. Don't worry about your calves and your forearms and your neck and your, uh, your deadlift if you don't like deadlifting. Like, just don't worry about that stuff. Don't worry about hamstrings. Worry about, worry about consistency. The way that we're gonna find consistency, the way we're gonna get our groove back and find our mojo is through the things that we like, the things that we enjoy. You don't like doing lying leg curls because they hurt your back or they're uncomfortable or they're annoying or you only wanna work the muscles that you can see in the mirror. Only work the muscles that you see in the mirror. I'm giving you permission. Uh, because you need to do it. You need to put in the reps. You need to put in the time. Whoops. And uh, you need to just figure out whatever way you, whatever way you can, to get yourself to the gym. Because that'll be have the biggest and bestest impact. So, train every day. Cardio, vascular training. It would be good to, uh, you know, try to do about three sessions a week that are about 20 minutes a pop. Steady state cardio, either walking uphill on the treadmill. You'll set your treadmill at 12 or 15. Speed is up to you, but set your treadmill at 12 or 15. Um, if you have a stair stepper, those are amazing. Um, <clears throat> Otherwise, you know, get in three 10 minute walks every single day. But the addition of like actual cardio, three 20 minute sessions is a great discipline to uh, adhere to. And then also it's just a little bit less lifting for those days. So the three days that you do your cardio, you could spend a little less time on lifting. You can do 20 minutes of cardio and 20 minutes of biceps on a particular day. And it's kind of like a day off. 
20 minutes of cardio and 20 minutes of shoulders it's kind of like a day off so give that a shot see how it works for you my lats are killing me right now already killing me softly Drop the weight down a little bit. See if I can try to get a couple holds in here. The sets that you want you know these are super sets after you're already pre-fatigued get to see what you're made out of be made out of something different you get to see what's within you what's inside you what you got push yourself Oh, burn in. Those of you who got the bicep board, make sure you try this exercise right here. This is a bicep board pullover. It's great. Once you get to right here, you really got to concentrate on not just kind of falling with your body weight, but you want to squeeze the lats. Right underneath the armpit, squeeze. <sighs> oh, that is killing me. I talked with uh, a guy on the phone yesterday, Tom Thornton's dad. And there was three things that really stuck out for him on the carnivore diet. Um, there were things that changed with each week. Week one, he said he ate like 5,000 calories. This guy that weighs about, he weighed about 260. And he didn't gain a pound from that. He just was eating as much as he possibly could, eating when he was hungry and eating until he was full. Week number two comes around and his appetite kind of reset and the protein leveraging, him eating all that protein, really ended up helping him a lot in week two because appetite reset and he didn't need that much food. He was able to get to a more reasonable caloric intake. I think he was cutting his food down at that point to more like 3,000 calories. Uh, in week three, he said that what got recalibrated and reset on him was his taste buds. He re-identified with the amazing flavors of natural foods, of savory foods. Instead of getting all these sweet tastes all the time, uh, I think it's something like 80% of the stuff that's in the supermarket has either vegetable oil or sugar in it. Keep in mind, everybody, vegetable oil, right? Comes from a vegetable, okay? Keep in mind that sugar is a plant, okay? <laughs> Those of you that are wishing that one day we all get to a diet that is more plant-based, I wanna tell you that we're already there. <laughs> Cause 80 or 90% of this bullshit that you see in the supermarket already has sugar or vegetable oil in it. I rep recognize that's not a great representation of a vegan diet. I, represent, I understand it's not a great representation of plants and vegetables, but we already get a large influence of that in our nutrition, in the convenience stores and in the grocery stores and stuff like that. So we want to stick to eating meat. And in this case with Tom's uh, dad, 
the third week his palate recalibrated that's what we're looking for we need to re-educate our palate your palate shouldn't be so used to all these artificial flavors and all this artificial stuff tom's dad went from 260 down to 220 in a very short period of time i think he's been doing the carnivore diet for three months that's 20 pounds per month pretty much he went from 260 to 220 and he's still losing and he's still doing great and he's still advancing so those are things that could change very easily for you you can change your taste buds you can kind of reset your diet and reset the type of foods that you're eating every day and then you can also reset your appetite as is the case with Tom and or Tom's dad not not just Tom's dad but Tom as well and many other people that have been trying the carnivore diet so we're gonna do one more superset here I'm not doing a good job of like pausing on these and I want to pause with these weights a little bit more. Something that I probably don't mention enough when it comes to the carnivore diet, but if, if you're on a carnivore diet and you're confused about your lifting, I'm gonna make it really simple right here and just show you what I do. And this is something that you can incorporate. So this is a different type of bar, of bar that I have here, but you could use any bar and you can follow along and do this exact same set. You can work along with me. So I like to use these straps. These are called Versa Grips. These are really easy to buy, really accessible. It's not my product. I wish it was. It's a great idea, a great product. Whoever created it, my, I tip my hat to you. This is a great, great idea. So uh, I'm gonna do a set of lat pull downs. I'm gonna do a set of six to 12 repetitions. I'm gonna try to pause each one at my chest and I'm gonna do what's called a super set. <laughs> and I'm gonna put my hands out a little wider and I'm gonna repeat and do again. So the weight that's on here isn't, isn't, uh, isn't all that heavy. If you wanted to push and you wanted to you know, really go through some strain, you would want even these first six to eight reps to be tough, but I don't really want them to be tough because I wanna be able to pause them. So I'm gonna bring them down, I'm gonna hold, and I wanna be able to hold every time. Two, here's three, If I don't get that hold, it's not a rep. And you can see already the hold wants to drift away from me. So what we're going to do, that tells us that we lost a little bit of strength. It's going to take a couple seconds. This is still a superset, but this is also referred to as a rest pause method I'm letting my body replenish and dip into the reserves so I can continue a set so I can get more reps on this next set here so now we're gonna go wider and we're gonna repeat and we still have to get those holds and we need 6 to 12 again 1 2 three, four, five. Now I'm gonna do six reps, just touch and go kind of. Do this on a minimum of two different exercises for each body part, maybe even three different exercises, but a minimum of two. And uh, try to get your ass to the gym just about every single day. If that's not reasonable for you to do, uh, four times a week will suffice. I'll be plenty of training for the, but you can do this with anything. You could do this on a leg extension. You can do this on a leg press. You can do this for your hamstrings. You can do this for your biceps. You can do it for your triceps. Uh, one for biceps would be uh, standing, uh, do a standing alternating dumbbell curl and then just turn that right into a standing alternating hammer curl. And there you go. It doesn't have to be, nothing has to be complicated. 
You don't have to do stuff that's really painful. You don't have to do exercise that you hate. If you hate to squat, don't squat. Fuck it. Don't do it, man. <laughs> like, why, why are you coercing yourself into doing stuff that you really don't want to do? I'm trying to post a, a cool Instagram post. You know who's getting got in that equation? You. Because you're doing stuff that you really don't enjoy, you really don't love. So that's, I mean, that's, that's just, it doesn't get any more simple than that. If you wanted to add in other stuff, you could add in some body weight exercises a couple times a week, some uh, just regular squats with uh, some push ups, throwing some burpees here and there, and you got yourself a hell of an exercise program. Let's check out this fatness underneath here. Oh my God, how many layers of clothes do I have on? Holy Toledo. This is what happens when you start to shrink down. You got to wear more clothes so you still look big when you're walking around normal. Oh, there we go. Oh, I still got the sweater on. What do you guys think of all this fur? Works out great in the winter. Been really happy with keeping the physique uh, going. Um, we still got we still got a couple days to keep cranking on this and, and get in better shape. So I'm excited for that. Bicep board pullovers. Remember the key factor here is as we get to the bottom, we really got to pull. You really got to pull towards you. So you can scoot way back from the machine. And once you get to here, really pull down and in towards you. Sometimes in our training, it's nice to have indicators. And the, the indicator that you go full range of motion is that you tap your belly with the board. It's good to have those cues, those physical cues sometimes. Doing a drop set here too. Take her down. When you do your drop sets, Drop the weight down a little bit lower than what you think. Get a little less weight on there than you might anticipate. And the reason for that is, is you can flex harder, you can concentrate more when you do that. So I can get a more powerful squeeze. Squeeze it. It's all about that squeeze. We're going to move into doing these Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai lap pull down. So I've been thinking about my lats. I've been thinking about your lats. I've been thinking about our lats more often. And, you know, a way to flex them up and to get them big is to take air into your chest. So if you don't know what you're doing with any of this, you can just go. And you saw how my chest at least expanded, right? We're trying to get the lats in there. It gets to be way more complicated because we're trying to flex muscles that are like underneath our armpits. And they don't flex from you just doing like a shoulder raise or a front shoulder raise, but they will flex when you flex your pecs. So, show of hands who knows how to flex their pecs do you know how to do this maybe you don't know how to do that that well but maybe you can take a ball and maybe you can just i'll just use a shaker cup as an example just take the shaker cup and just and just squeeze it but can you figure that out if you can figure that out then you can start to see that your lats will flex right point of this is if, is that if you don't know how to flex your lats very well it's going to be really hard to work them because you don't really know how to even engage them so then you can kind of look in the mirror and you can start to this isn't lats this is like other stuff but if you pull down you can start to think well I don't really feel my lats but once you get to like here you'll probably feel them and then you can kind of look in the mirror are you are they flared out like right there they start to look like they're flaring out a little bit right which you have to be pretty, you have to have to train your lats for a while to be able to have them come out when you do like a double bicep. But now you can start to learn to kind of crunch down on them. 
But to flex them from the front, I think, is a pretty easy concept to get used to. And if we're thinking about the lats, where look how wide my hands are right now. I realize the bodybuilders, they do that kind of front pose. I'm not very good at that one because my shoulder mobility sucks. I have to work on it more. And I've actually been doing some of my 10 minute walks with my hands behind my back to try to get these shoulders to open up so I can hit that pose better. But if I'm just looking at the lats from here, look how wide my arms are, right? So maybe that would make sense to do some pull downs with my arms pretty wide and some rowing some rowing with my arms pretty wide. And maybe I can kind of learn how to do some of this stuff. Another quick and easy way to learn how to flex your lats is gonna be right here. I'll show you this one. All right, so this product right here, I am not paid by this company. I have no affiliation with these guys at all, but this product right here is called a slingshot. And if you wanna know how to flex your back, a great item to learn how to flex your back pull it up over your chubby little arms I know your arms are chubby and I know they're short don't even start with me you want to learn how to flex them throw this bad boy on you don't need any weight all we're gonna do is just slingshot pull apart pull it apart and pull the elbows back and you'll feel your back start to work a lot okay so that's one way just Pulling the elbows back, pulling the elbows back behind the midline of your body, and pulling the band apart. The slingshot. All right, that's one way. Another way is this way in a pullover fashion. So we're like this, and you're pulling it over. And you try to, your arms will probably move better than mine. You try to keep the elbows, I'm sorry, the chest up, get the elbows past the body. And you can even do this with the bicep board because as you get to here it'll be harder and you go and you gotta pull but you want to learn how to activate those lats grab your slingshot pull it apart start to pull the elbows back get them back behind the midline of your body as best you can you can do it with your hands coming in like this or you can do it with your hands out wider i'm going to show you how to utilize it with the bicep board try it with that weight so I know this is double contraption, but it's double contraction Tuesday, contraption Tuesday. So we get to here and now where it gets to be hard, the slingshot kicks in. Now we got to pull a little further. Again, I have absolutely no affiliation with this product, but I did hear that the website is markbellslingshot.com. So go check it out. So I just showed you how to flex them, right? Now we're gonna take advantage when we do this exercise. Bam! Got a lot of weird noises, that's key factor. Try to get that stretch, get that arm to stretch. Part of your growth is going to be that you keep some good mobility. Don't forget the noises. Hip. <clears throat> just old guy noises, you know? Just think about, think about your uncle getting up off the couch after watching a playoff game of football, right? And he's going, hip. <clears throat> Gotta make those noises when you train. It's all part of it. Hip. <clears throat>
<clears throat> Remember, your lat helps stabilize your spine. <clears throat> so, here. So you're doing these exercises, you can get a little bend, you can get a little twist in there because the lats are helping to kind of stabilize that whole column of what's called your spinal erectors. And so if you go from here, let's go from here to here, that's okay. But you can also go here whoop, and pull all the way over and down. Because your lat, even though there's some probably junk in the trunk here, your lat goes all the way down into almost your hip. Your lat, not mine, no, just kidding. They all go there. So we got a set of that done. Oh, and uh, probably do about three sets of that total. And that'll probably be it for today. Like not that, not a crazy amount of work, but work, getting that work done. Hey, <clears throat> Smokey goes with his noises are more of a whoosh. Does a lot of those, but you need to get your own noises, you know, get your own noises going. Hey, yep. going a little heavier on this set here and I think next set I'm gonna bring the weight down and see if I can just pull the weight a little bit better because I'm kind of moving my arm in some ways that just aren't optimal but sometimes it's nice just to get some weight on there so we'll worry about it on the next set okay, yep I'm diving in kind of hard to figure out what to do with this other arm sometimes. raise this up this is stuff I like to do I like to kind of experiment move things around a little bit so we're gonna lighten her up a lot and I'm gonna see I noticed last week when I did this and I watched the video that when I was pulling that I was kind of pulling like here like this I want to see if I can pull more in line with my body, which will be hard for me to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to mix in a set just because I'm bored of some uh, single arm. Get a little bit more work in here. I'm going to keep these light, and because my elbow's banged up, I'm going to do a like a row pullover. So it's going to be here. I'll be right here. And I'm gonna pull up over the hip. So I'll show you with a really light weight. You get an idea what it looks like. About here. And I'm gonna pull up and over the hip. There's a minimal bend. You can also do a row this way. These are fine. It's a good movement. But I'm just going to do them a little different. Maybe I'll finish some reps out with the regular standard row. You do about 40 pounds. Let's see how that works. Start out on the left side. My left side's a little weaker than my right. Over here.
over the hip. As you're doing these rows, keep that right shoulder towards the floor. So don't come up like this, okay? That's not what we're looking to do. Right shoulder towards the floor. A lot of people end up twisting a lot on those. Woo. And some of that's okay. It's okay to twist a little bit, but you don't want that to be the whole movement. Yep. Just uh, sometimes when you're in a workout, you're thinking, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I gotta get to this exercise, I gotta get that exercise. And then I, I need to eat, I'm getting hungry. I need my post-workout shake and I didn't bring it with me. I didn't have my pre-workout and just pause for a second. Calm yourself down and think about how fortunate you are to be able to do this. How lucky and fortunate we are in this country to be able to go in the gym and play bodybuilder for a little while, play powerlifter for a little while, and uh, be thankful and grateful for the body that you have, that you're capable of coming in here and doing these movements. Some people are born with no, no legs. Some people are born with no arms. Some people have accidents. Some people have this, some people have that. You still have yourself, you still have your health, you still have a good, strong, healthy mind. And so rather than thinking about all this shit that you haven't done yet, think about the fact that you're in the middle of doing it. What a cool feeling that is. So balance yourself out a little bit. Stop for a second and enjoy it. And say, hey, this feels really good to be doing this. Here we go. So I wanted to see if I could pull over a little straighter. I don't know if I can or not. Oh yeah, I kind of can. Maybe I need to be. No, that's not gonna work. Challenging for me, which is great. Hip. Ah. Last set. My wing is falling off. My wedding wing. Alright. Here we go. The same thing. Getting a little bit of rowing right here.
Pack some size onto that back. No regrets, leave no doubt. Elbow is a little swollen up, so I wore the strong elbow sleeve for the workout. Keep everything intact. Keep me protected. Protect yourself before you wreck yourself. And here's the last look like at the end of a good workout. Get a little legs in there. Still eating lots of food <laughs> the last couple days just to kind of slice up I'll just eat a little bit less but I'm feeling really good with the amount of food I've been eating and everything's been feeling good so I've been keeping that going That's it for today. There's the back workout. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. Catch you guys later.